Hey everybody, just want to welcome you to week 8, module 8 for ME12 Dynamics course. On um, this module, we're going to take a look at rigid body motion, translation and rotation, and look at planar kinematics of a rigid body at the start of chapter 16. Once we finish this module, you should be able to classify various types of rigid body planar motion, investigate rigid body translation and angular motion about a fixed axis, uh, study planar motion uh, using absolute motion analysis, Take a look at relative motion analysis of velocity and acceleration using translating frame for reference. Should be able to show the instantaneous center of zero velocity and determine the velocity of a point on a body using this method. And lastly, provide the relative motion analysis of velocity and acceleration using a rotating frame of reference. So your required readings for this section here, chapter 16, sections 1, 2, and 3. And the only assignment this week is going to be quiz number eight. So as we begin module eight, one of the first things we're gonna do is go back through our exam one. I'll go through my hand solutions along with the class statistics for all the grades for this exam. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, lecture 8.1 for this module here, where we're going to look at rigid body motion, translation, and rotation. We're going to analyze uh, the kinematics of rigid body undergoing planar translation or rotation about a fixed axis. So within this section, we're going to go through a couple different applications, review the types of rigid body motion, planar translation, talk about rotation when it's a fixed axis, and then go through a couple of problems by hand with my solution. So some of the key concepts that we're going to cover in this module here are uh, relative motion, relative velocity, because we're talking about, about a fixed axis or a referencing, rotating, moving axis. So we're going to review a little bit of relative motion analysis here. So a couple of key equations here. So if we have the position of B, this is equal to the position of A plus the, the position of B relative to A. So this is just a rearrangement of what we've seen before for relative position. So if we were to take this and we were to do the first time derivative of each of these, the derivative of position becomes velocity at B here. The derivative of position A becomes the velocity of A. Then we have D over DT or relative uh, position would be with respect to A. So if this position of B with respect to A is a constant, and we take the derivative of a constant, it becomes zero, which then states that our velocity of B is equal to our velocity at A. If we take the derivative of that, our acceleration at B is our acceleration at A. So that's just starting with our relative position equation slightly rearranged, doing a little bit of calculus on this uh, in order to move it to our velocity and then to our acceleration right there with this being a constant. So as we're talking about rotating axis, oftentimes they're going to give us things in revolution. So just a reminder, one revolution is equal to two pi radians. So we get things in the right units here. Now, if we're dealing with our omegas here in units of radians per second, this is equal to d over dt of our theta term here. And what you know is I've put this little notation here to show which positive I'm talking about. So I'm considering counterclockwise to be positive. So I can put this here so I can clearly understand what I've considered positive as I'm going through my work. And our theta here is going to be its angular position. So now if we go down to alpha, we're dealing with units of radians per second squared here, or the second time derivative of our angular position theta here, which is equal to our first time derivative of our omega term here, d omega dt. So we can rewrite this equation that alpha is equal to our omega times d omega d theta if we rearrange that right there. And again, I put my notation I'm considering counterclockwise to be positive. So for a constant alpha, alpha is equal to alpha sub c for a constant alpha there, we have the following relationships. So we can use these right here. Omega is equal to our omega naught plus alpha ct, our constant acceleration, angular acceleration times time. Uh, our theta is equal to our initial theta naught times omega t, omega naught t plus one half alpha sub c t squared. And omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus two alpha c times theta minus theta naught. Again, recall, if we're looking with velocities in terms of our omega here, velocity is equal to omega times r. It's a cross product there. And our a sub t, 
tangential and our a sub n, our normal, are given by the relationships here, alpha r and omega squared r there. So therefore, our acceleration term here is equal to alpha cross r minus omega squared r is equal to a sub t plus a sub n, where we could plug in for our a sub t's and our a sub n's uh, with those relationships right there.